Thank you very much. Amen. How's everyone this morning? Are you ready to open your Bibles? We've been looking at the book of Daniel. And just as a review, we've been seeing in how the book of Daniel prepares us for these days. For the last days, which your pastor does believe we are living in the last days. Absolutely. Especially with the, the coming soon visit of the Pope, which is very interesting. We saw there in Daniel chapter 1 that it's hip to be square. We saw that these three Hebrew boys with Daniel were odd and they were okay being odd. They were okay not participating in the king's food. They were okay being different. And we have to come to the realization that we are different. We are different. We are not like the world. The, 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 the Bible tells us not to be yoked with the world. To be different. In Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had that gave to Daniel, he was not just telling Daniel or the king the future, but he was letting Daniel know that God was in control. He was letting Daniel know that Babylon would, would not always reign. There would soon be an end to the Babylonian Empire, that God was in control. And in these last days, we have to realize that with all the problems, outside of the church and inside of the church, God is still in control. Amen. God is still in control. It's his church. He died for it. He loves it. He is not going to let it go. Absolutely not. In Daniel chapter 3, we saw that King Nebuchadnezzar made his own interpretation of the dream. You see, if you, re if you remember Daniel 2, it had the dream with the different metals, the gold, the bronze, silver. And in Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of what? Gold. Only one. All gold. Now, is that how the dream was? No. King Nebuchadnezzar made his own interpretation and says, I don't like Daniel's word, which was God's word. I will make my own interpretation. And we learned when we looked at Daniel chapter 3 that in these last days, we cannot give our own interpretation of Scripture. We cannot say, well, you know, the Bible does say, but, but times are different. Or the culture nowadays, that's not going to fly when it comes to the judgment and God. He wants to know if you did what he says. In Daniel chapter 4, we saw that pride goes before a fall. And King Nebuchadnezzar had been exposed to God, exposed to God from, from the first chapter. Until God had to humble him in order for him to be humbled. We learn in Daniel chapter 4 that if you push God and resist God and knowing what you know and you keep resisting God, God may, just may, push you back. And when he does, friends, that's why the Bible says humble yourself. Because if God humbles you, you will not be the same. You will not be the same. And so in Daniel chapter 6, we looked at already um, a couple of weeks ago on how Daniel entered a lion's den before the lion's den. You remember that? Who were the lions before the real lion's den? There were the other governors there that wanted to entrap him. And so we will be going through trial before the real trial. We will be facing lions before we enter into the real lion's den. So our, our scripture reading there in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Let's bow our heads. 
Father in heaven, this is such a powerful text. And I ask that you open our minds as we open your word and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This text that was read earlier and just read right now is a powerful text when understood contextually. When you understand the context. See, Daniel stood on what he believed. He stood on what he believed. And the verse reminds me of what happened a couple of days ago in 1521. Actually, April 21st, 1521, Martin Luther, the German monk, the doctor now, Dr. Luther, there at the Diet of Worms, where if you see on your bulletin in the meditation is his quotation. Excuse me while I get a bulletin. And he is before the king, before the emperor, before the pope, before the most powerful leaders in his day. You see, he, he was brought there to renounce his faith. He was brought there and hoping that he would be intimidated by the higher powers that were there. The emperor and the pope and the purpose of the gathering was for Martin Luther to renounce what he believed. And there it says, I'm quoting here what Martin Luther says. He says, unless I am refuted and convicted by testimonies of the scriptures or by clear argument, since I believe that neither the Pope nor the councils alone, it being evident that they have often erred and contradicted themselves, I am concurred by the Holy Scriptures quoted by me, and my conscience is bound in the Word of God. That should be our goal. Our conscience is bound to the Word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything since it is unsafe and dangerous to do anything against the conscience here I stand I can do no other God help me amen amen so when they were hoping for him to renounce yet he had the courage to condemn the teachings of the Catholic Church he had the guts to stand for what he believed. And other reformers as well, not just Martin Luther. Luther demonstrated that knowing the truth is one thing, but standing on truth is something else. Yes. Knowing the truth is one thing, but standing and doing it is totally something else. And Daniel understood that as well. Daniel knew the truth by standing on it, it is something else. So there in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, we see there verses 1 through 3. Daniel is so special that the nation that conquered Babylon took him and placed him on top. You see there where it says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So even besides the three governors, he was the one on top of the other two. On top of, the, of, of them. He placed him on top. He was rising and rising. The quality, the quality of Daniel is noticed from one conqueror to the, the next. It's noticed from Nebuchadnezzar even here to Darius. And today the world is still impressed with somebody who has principles and character. The world is still looking for people with principle and character. Honestly, honesty is still valued. Morality is still valued. Consistency 
is something that, that is still value. And here, we see the story in Daniel chapter 6. I'm going to just relate it to you. You may already know it, but we're going to spend most of our times in verse 10. But so we can get a context of the chapter in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel is brought here. He is made a second to King Darius. And the other governors get jealous. And they can't find anything against Daniel except that he is faithful to his God. So they make a law that for 30 days no one can pray to any other God except to who? Darius, King Darius. Because they knew that Daniel would still be faithful even among that. And Daniel was faithful and, who, and the law said that whoever was not faithful would go into the lion's den and Daniel was placed in the lion's den and God delivered him from the lion's den. If you are not familiar with the story, please read Daniel chapter 6. But that is the story. And so there in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he still went up to his room and opened his windows. That is exactly what God expects of Christians, to be consistent. But Daniel didn't change his prayer patterns because of the law. And even if they would have made a law that Daniel couldn't observe the Sabbath, Daniel still would have observed the Sabbath. Daniel was consistent, and God expects his people to be consistent. Too many cases we've sold out to popularity and want the easy way out. But the Bible says there in Matthew 7, 13, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life which leads to life. So not choosing the easy way, he chose to do what's right. He was consistent, even when it wasn't convenient. Don't miss that, friends. Sometimes the world will tell you, or even your friends, it's not convenient to give 10% back to the church and give another percent for offerings. It's not convenient. It's not convenient to come the church Saturday here but we don't do what God says because it's convenient we do it because he says we do it because he says sometimes my children know it's not convenient to obey something specifically that I said but they know that they better do it because their daddy and mommy say so so I want to share with you a quote here from patriarchs and prophets page 546 we can just adjust it right there. Thank you very much. The same characteristics, talking about Daniel, marked his after, no, hold on, I want, let's go back. There we go. Strict, strict what? Compliance, Compliance with the requirements of heaven bring temporal as well as spiritual blessings. Unwavering in his alliance to God, unwavering. Talking about Daniel and his alliance to God. Can that be said about you or about me? Unwavering his alliance to God, unyielding in his mastery of self, Daniel, by his noble dignity and unswavering integrity, while yet a young man. I like that. Yet what? A young man. So there is no excuse for us young people to, to, not, be, to not be faithful won the favor and tender love of the heathen officer in, those ch in, in whose charge he had been placed. The same characteristics marked his afterlife. He rose speedily to the position of prime minister of the king of Babylon through the reign of successive monarchs the downfall of the nation and the establishment of another world empire. Such were his wisdom and statementships. St statement so perfect his tact, his courtesy, his genuine goodness. Are you seeing that besides him being faithful, 
he was still a nice person. He wasn't one of those, you know, there are some people that say, I'm going to say the truth whether it hurts people or not. Friends, God is not pleased with that. So perfect in his tact, his courtesy, his genuine goodness of heart, his fidelity to principle, that even his enemies were forced to the confession that they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. For as much as he was faithful. This is a challenge, friends. Can they say that about you and me? That they could not find no fault. They could find no fault. How consistent are you? How consistent am I? Do the people you work with know you by your faith? By your religion? If somebody had to come up with something against you, if somebody had to come up with something against you, would it be on your faith, on your religion, or do they know you so well that your religion really wouldn't play a factor in it? Somebody wanted to come up with something against you. Because friends, in the last days, only those who are consistent will be saved. You gotta be consistent. Daniel was consistent. He was faithful. He was faithful and not just consistent. He did not rationalize. There again, Daniel 6 verse 10, we've seen this already. But I, I structured this whole sermon on that one verse. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with the windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down. How did Daniel know? There where it says, now when Daniel knew. How did he know? Did he wait till he got the memo home? And then he found out? What position did Daniel have? Do, you, do we, re, do we re, remember? Second in command. The other, the other governors were under him. The law couldn't have been passed without going through Daniel. Daniel was right there with the king and the other counselors. So if somebody made a law and it was going to go through the king, it had to go through Daniel too. Yet Daniel didn't say anything. Yet Daniel didn't say anything. Yet, on the contrary, he went home and what did he do? He opened his windows. He opened his windows. Daniel didn't rationalize. He could have closed his windows and said, well, I'll close them during these 30 days. You see, Daniel didn't protest, but he actually did protest. He didn't tell the king, wait a minute, this goes against what I say. No, he didn't say anything. But he protested by still being consistent in his prayer life. And some of us rationalize or listen to other opinions. We may, we may not bring up the issue of the Sabbath at the job interview. We may think, I'll bring it up later if I get the job. And then when, when you do get the job and maybe they ask you for a Sabbath, then you come to the church and say, oh, can you pray for me because they're asking me to work on the Sabbath. Don't rationalize. Daniel, on the contrary, didn't protest the law, but he did. He intentionally opened the window. Now, look closely in the verse there. You see, when sometimes we see the art picture, have we seen this in a drawing before of Daniel praying with the window open? Was Daniel an important person? I don't believe Daniel had a little hut somewhere. Daniel was one of the governors. And very, you know, somebody political. Politicians don't live in a little apartment. Daniel had, I believe, a nice place. And there where it says, he went home and in his upper room with his window, no, windows, it's plural, with his windows open. See, Daniel, Daniel went home and said, I'm going to let everyone know where I stand. He went to the living room and opened that window. 
Went over to the kitchen in case he couldn't pray for his food. I opened that window too. Went to his reading study room, opened that window. The Bible says, actually, when he went, his windows toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God before God as his custom was in his upper room. And in his upper room, the Bible says. So obviously he had two stories. So he opened the windows downstairs, opened the windows upstairs, he opened all the windows because he wanted to let the king and everyone know where he stood. So if he prayed in the living room, if he prayed in his bedroom, if he prayed in the dining room, let them see me. Let them see me. Daniel was a prime minister, someone important, and he knew that he was being watched. Do people watch politicians today? <laughs> That's all they do. Watch what they drive, where they go eat, what they're wearing. You think Daniel wouldn't, wasn't being watched? Of course. And he even made it more obvious and opened all the windows. I can, I can picture that. Daniel knowing the law that had just been passed. He purposely boom, opened the window. And don't think that Daniel just knelt down and had a little quick 10 second prayer. Lord bless me today, amen. He wanted to let others know by opening all the windows where he stood. He opened the windows with no fear because he was full of the word of God. He was full of the word of God. You see, when, when you are full of the word of God, it gives you a backbone. It gives you character to stand. To be a Sabbath-keeping Christian when most of the world worships on Sunday, you've got to have a backbone. And when you leave the house and your neighbor may see you dressed nice and you have your Bible, he tells you, where are you going? What do you say? I'm going to church. I'm going to, I'm going to church. Open that window. Let people know where you stand. To be a Sabbath-keeping Seventh-day Adventist and not rationalize for breaking the Sabbath, it takes backbone too. Even among Adventists, it takes backbone to be a Seventh-day Adventist. When, other, when others may compromise on doing certain activities on Sabbath that the Bible strictly forbids, it takes backbone to say, no, I'm not going to partake in that. Thank you very much. You open a window. To, so friends, I, I just urge you to be a, a Daniel. Be a Daniel and open a window. Let everyone see, let others, Seventh-day Avenue, see where you stand. And say, this is where I stand, I can do no other. Martin Luther had, we're gonna see at the end, why he was so bold and had the guts to stand. Not because he was born with a special DNA. No. The only way you can stand is if you are filled with the Word of God, friends. That's the only way you can stand. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Let's see what, what the Bible does for us. Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're going to go through several verses here. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 Therefore you shall lay up these words Talking about the word of God Of mine in your hearts and in your soul And bind them as a sign on your hand And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes The Bible keeps us focused As frontlets between our eyes It keeps us focused There in Psalms 119 verse 11 We know this Your word I have hid in my heart That I may not sin against thee the Bible keeps us from sinning. Amen. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word is our guide. Our guide. You want to know which direction you need to go? The Bible will tell you. The Bible will tell you. There is no need to come to the pastor and say, Pastor, you know, I've been seeing this person. I know he's not Christian. I know he's not a Seventh-day Adventist. But, 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 but what do you think I should do? The Bible already answers that question. 
Well, pastor, you know, I can't really give an, an offering uh, for the next couple of weeks. Just wait till my income tax and then I'll give. What does the Bible, uh, the Bible answers that already for us. We're going to see in, in, in a little while how nosy the Bible is. There in Psalms 119, Psalms 119, 130. The Bible is our guide. The Bible keeps us focused. Psalm 119, 130. It says, The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The word gives education to the uneducated. Amen. You don't have to study a theology degree to understand the Bible. The Bible gives you understanding, gives education to the uneducated. You see, during the Dark Ages, the Bible was locked up. And people couldn't read the Bible. But aren't you glad that today you can open a Bible and read it whenever you want? Yes. Amen. You said amen. You know what that means? That God will hold you not responsible. God will hold you responsible. You can't come to God on judgment and say, well, let me see what my pastor said or, or, or what my pastor preached or what he did. On judgment day, God is not going to ask you what I did or said, but what you did with the information that you know. He's not going to ask you what day your parents kept or grandparents kept. What day did you keep with the information that you know, with the truth that you know? Because the Bible is so accessible for us God holds every person responsible now every person responsible John 17 17 tells us sanctify them by your truth your word is truth the word sanctifies us the word of God sanctifies and there Hebrews chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 4 The Bible even cuts our heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart have you ever read a, a, a verse in the Bible that you thought was just written just for you yes. <laughs> this was the word that Daniel locked in his heart Daniel was a st student of the Bible we know that because there in the book of Daniel, when Daniel knows the writings of Jeremiah, that for 70 years they were going to be taken captive to Babylon. And he knew that those 70 years were almost up. He, he, he studied the Bible. He had the word of God locked in his heart. And you need to lock it in your heart because you don't know when you're going to need it. You don't know when you're going to need it. You know, Exodus 20 verse 8 said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So when you learn about that text and when you learn about that verse, now you have Bible truth. And maybe you, you didn't have that day off and you go to your boss, say, Boss, I learned something in the Bible. I learned that Saturday is the Sabbath day. And it's a holy day, and I'm going to need that day off. But the problem comes because your boss hasn't read that verse. Your boss may not care about that verse. And the only way that we can have a backbone like Daniel to stand for what is right like Martin Luther is to be filled with the Word of God. Is to be filled with the Word of God. The Bible finds out really who you are. The Bible really finds out who you are. There in Great Controversy, page 593, read with me. Those who endeavor to obey all the commandments of God will be opposed and 
derided. They can stand only in God. In order to endure the trial before them, they must understand the will of God as revealed in His Word. You have to spend time in the Bible, friends. You have to. I, I enjoy listening to sermons. I enjoy it. But that is not the same as spending time in the Word of God. It will never be the same. A good sermon may be powerful, but you see, the preacher who sermons I heard, he spent time in the Bible. And that's why it was a powerful sermon. You need to spend time, I need to spend time in the Word of God. Now, let, let's continue reading. Now, now, when I say join me, I mean join me. The balcony too. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truth of the Bible will stand through the last day conflict. Simple, friends. You're not, you're, you're not spending time in the Word of God? Forget it. You're wasting your Sabbath coming here. You got to spend time in the Word of God. You have to. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truth of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. We are living in the last days, and if you want to stand in the last days, you have to be filled with the Word of God. You have to. There is no substitution. Listening to sermons isn't a substitution. You have to spend time in the Word of God. Now, I may, it is not my intentions, but some, some may not like the next sentence, and that is that the church is full of people pretending to be Christians. The church is full of people pretending to be Christians. Well, how can you say that? <laughs> Wait tomorrow in the constituency and you'll see a lot of pretenders. This book exposes us, the Bible. There is some text here, there is some text here that you and I may not be following and the Lord is going to bring it to us, bring it to our attention. And we have to decide whether we do what God says or we do what I want to do. There are texts here that we're not following. We have to, and when God reveals that to us, we have to come to the decision I follow God or I follow what I want to do. Because the Bible, as I said earlier, is a nosy book. It is. It gets all in your life. It tells you how to worship. It tells you what day to worship. It, does, it tells you how to eat. It tells you how to dress, what to watch, what to listen to, what to do, where to go. It even tells you who to hang out with. There in Proverbs 33 and Proverbs 23, those who spend time with fools are fools, the Bible says. The Bible gets all in our life. So friends, either read the Bible and do what it says, or don't read the Bible and be lost. We either read the Bible and do what it says, or, not, or don't read the Bible and be lost. You cannot come to church, I'm sorry, you can come to church all you want, but if you don't follow the word of God, friends, his book, you will be lost. What does it mean to be lost? Let me paint it in a different picture. You'll burn in the lake of fire. You'll burn in hell. If I'm frightening some of you, I, I'm, I hope so. Because we have two alternatives, friends. Read the word of God and do it, or just come every week and just be pretenders and we're marching our way right to the lake of fire. So how did Daniel do it? There in Daniel chapter six. I'm appealing to you, church, there in Daniel chapter six, verse 11. When the law was written, Daniel already knew, but yet he opened his windows. He stood on what he believed. 
There, verse 11, it says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man, or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true. According to the, to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Verse 13. So they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regards for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. You see, friends, there are people who respect you. There are people who, re who respect you. Darius respected Daniel and loved Daniel. He didn't see that they pulled this fast one under him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone along with it. But there are people who respect you, and there are other people who will use those who respect you to trap you. You got people that respect you, and then you have others that use those who respect you to put you in a tight spot put you in a tight spot to trap you and that is why when it comes to standing for God you can't rely on anyone bailing you out you can't he couldn't Daniel couldn't rely on Darius hey I thought we were friends Darius had his hands tied there in verse 14 it says and the king when he heard these words was greatly displeased with himself and said his heart on Daniel to deliver him but he couldn't bail him out when we stand for God we cannot count on others to bail us out you have to rely solely on God solely on God only God will bail you out Daniel could only rely on God friends and you and I can only rely on God that's why it's important to spend time in the Bible. That is the only way. Spend time in the Bible and prayer. There, Great Controversy, page 132. Here, we, we, we began with, with Martin Luther, quote, and we'll end with it. It says here, to a friend of the Reformation, Luther wrote. This is what Luther wrote and what he said. We cannot attain to the understanding of Scripture either by study or by the intellect. You fir your first duty is to begin by what? Prayer. By prayer. To begin by prayer. Entreat the Lord to grant you of His great mercy the true understanding of His word. There is no other interpreter of the word of God than the author of this word as he himself has said. They shall be all taught of God. So then he continues saying, hope for nothing from your own labors. Don't depend on your works. From your own understanding. Don't depend on your own interpretation. We should never say, well, I think this is what it means. If we're not sure, let's just say, you know, I don't know. On your own understanding, trust solely, not partly, solely in God and in the influence of His Spirit. Believe this on the word of a man who has had experience. Friends, do you want to stand for God? Amen. There is, there is a small group here that does. Do you want to stand for his church? Amen. Let me ask you a tricky question. Do you want to stand for his conference? I got quiet. It's God's church, friends. It's God's conference. It's God's union. It's God's division. It's God's movement. It's not mine. 
It's not Elders Craig. It's not Elder. It's not Elders. Elder Wilson's. It's God's. It's God. So, friends, I just want to appeal to you. Appeal to you. To not rationalize what the Bible says. To be consistent as Daniel was. And to be filled with his word. As we, as we have seen that the Bible keeps us focused. It keeps us from sin. It is our guide. It sanctifies us. And in, there, in Hebrews 4, it cuts even inside. If you had not had an experience where you read the Bible and you just had to stop because of what the Bible is saying and what the Holy Spirit is convicting you and sometimes you got to stop and, and pray, friends, you're not spending enough time in the Word of God. The Bible is what we need to get through. As we, as we saw there earlier, as we saw there earlier, None but those who have fortified the mind with the truth will stand in the last days, will stand in the last conflict. If right now, friends, while we have liberty, religious liberty, we do not stand, when it's taken away, which will happen very soon, you won't stand even there. And friends, it is my desire and my prayer that we all make it through to heaven. That we all enter those pearly gates. That we all walk the streets of gold. But Jesus has said that the road will be hard. The road will be hard. Endure to the end. Only those, he says, those who endure to the end shall be saved. Endure to the end, friends. So if it's your desire, friends, to endure to the end, to stand for God like Daniel. I invite you to stand. I invite you to stand as I have a closing prayer. Do you really want to stand for God? Yes. Friends, you can fool me all you want. That's fine. But you can't fool God. God knows what happens at your home and at your work. Father in heaven, Lord God, my God in heaven, Lord, we have, we have all fallen short. All of us. Every single one, including myself, Lord. And we ask forgiveness for spending little time in the Word of God. We ask that you help us to spend more time daily in your Word, in the Scriptures. That we fortified our mind with it and through prayer. So then only we'll be, we, will, we will be able to stand in the conflict times. So we will be able to stand as Luther. So we will be able to stand as Daniel. And even his th three friends who stood there in the fiery furnace. Lord, the only way we can stand is if we are filled with you. So please forgive us when we spend more time watching TV than reading your word. And we spend more time hanging out with friends than reading your word. When we spend more time in silly Facebook than reading your word. When we spend more time in other things. Please forgive us, Lord. And help us to every day, every day, May not go by without spending time in your word. Bless your people here. They have stood because they want to stand, Lord. And I just ask that you convict them in spending more time in your holy book. Thank you, Father, because you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.